Thank you for listening to Scandinavian Crimes Podcast. Be sure to check out the episode links and be part of our other social media platforms where you can leave a topic suggestion or even share some of your insights regarding the subject matter of the episode. We will always do our best to provide a well-researched episode, but sometimes due to limited access to information and translation issues, some information can be lost. It is therefore good to do your own research and get a deeper understanding of a case of your own interest. So with that all said, let us start today's episode. So welcome to another episode of Scandinavian Crimes. My name is Devante, and say hello to my lovely co-host, Delilah. Hi. And on this podcast, we will cover famous Scandinavian criminals who made their mark throughout Scandinavian history. So yes, I was sick, forgive me, uh, weather change, and also very demonic children who got me sick. But today's subject is very straightforward, very simple, but nonetheless interesting. And today's story is about Kim Wall, a Danish journalist who disappeared on August 10th, 2017, while reporting on a story about a homemade submarine built by a Danish inventor, Peter Madsen. The case quickly became a high profile investigation as Wall's disappearance was widely reported in the media and there was growing concern about her safety. So, like I said, this episode is not going to be super long. It's going to be relatively short, but nonetheless still informative. So sit back, grab some coffee, grab some snacks, and let's talk about the death of the reporter, Kim Wall. So something else I also did not mention is that specifically this one is laid out once again, a little more differently than we typically do things. So the way I'm telling the story is just basically the order of events in which was reported based on the situation that happened of her murder. So it doesn't really feel too much like a story, but it's more like a reporting of events that kind of transpired. So Kim Wall was a Danish journalist who disappeared on August 10th, 2017, while reporting on a story of a homemade submarine. The case quickly was a high profile case and the disappearance was widely reported in the media. Kim Wall boarded the UC3 Nautilus submarine, which was owned by Peter Madsen for an interview. The submarine sank later that day and Madsen was rescued and Wall was nowhere to be found. Madsen initially claimed that he had dropped the wall off at an Copenhagen island the previous evening, but that story was quickly debunked. Wall was reported missing to the police on August 11th and the extensive search was launched for her. On August 12, 2017, Madsen was arrested on suspicion of manslaughter. However, as the investigation continued, it became clear that there were serious questions about Madsen's involvement in Wall's disappearance. On August 21st, 2017, a cyclist had found a torso on the shore of the island near Copenhagen, which was later identified as belonging to Kim Wall. Madsen was taken into custody on suspicion of murder on August 13th, 2017. As the investigation continued, more information emerged about the circumstances surrounding Wall's death. As the investigation continued, more information emerged about the circumstances surrounding Wall's death. Madsen initially claimed that Wall had died in an accident on the submarine and that he had buried her at sea. However, this story quickly fell apart and Madsen later admitted to dismembering her body and throwing it overboard. Police divers eventually found Wall's head and legs in the water near where the torso was found. Madsen was formally charged with murder, indecent handling of a corpse, and other crimes on September 5, 2017. He was later charged in additional crimes, including sexual assault and causing a maritime disaster. The trial was closely watched by the media, and Madsen's changing stories about the circumstances surrounding Wall's death were seen as evidence of his guilt. On April 25th, 2018, Madsen was found guilty of premeditated murder, sexual assault, and desecration of a corpse and was sentenced to life in prison. The case received widespread media attention both in Denmark and internationally as it was seen as a shocking and tragic example of violence against women in the media industry. In the aftermath of her death, Kim Wall was remembered for her dedication to investigative journalism and her commitment to give a voice to the marginalized and underrepresented in society. The case also led to changes in Danish law, including the introduction of mandatory safety training for journalists and the requirement for vessels carrying passengers to have video surveillance equipment installed at all times. Additionally, there was increased awareness about the importance of safety measures when working as a freelance journalist. Madsen appealed his conviction and sentence, but on September 2018, the Eastern High Court upheld the verdict and the life sentence. 
the court found that Matson had planned the murder of Kim Wall and that he had acted with sexual motive. In October 2020, Peter Matson briefly escaped from Hearst Vester Prison, a maximum security prison outside Copenhagen, Denmark. Matson reportedly threatened staff in prison with the appearance of a gun-shaped object and demanded to be released. He was able to briefly escape before being surrounded and recaptured by police. Madsen was quickly brought back into custody and was charged with attempted escape and illegal possession of a fake firearm. In December 2020, he was found guilty of both charges and sentenced to an additional year in prison on top of the existing life sentencing for the murder of Kim Wall. The escape was shocking and highlighted the weakness in the Danish prison system and led to review of security measures at Hersted Vester Prison. The case also received significant media attention while many questioned how convicted murderer who had a history of violence and aggression could have been allowed to possess a fake gun and attempt to escape from a maximum security prison. So that's pretty much the events of how things played out from beginning to end. Like I said, pretty short story. But what's really, I guess, important about this story is that these events kind of cause laws and kind of policies to change. Uh, there are a lot of rules and regulations and even certain standards you have to meet for a lot of independent journalists because of Kim Wall, unfortunately, due to her death, but also just the concept of having surveillance on submarines, which is, I don't know if you've ever been to like one of those little museums that are on submarines. They constantly have cameras, even for ones that are not really functioning anymore. So even though this is a very very short story it's nonetheless very important because if you were someone who is a freelance whether it be journalist uh whether it be uh it could be a freelance anything uh especially if you're a woman you have to be very careful there are some people who have very negative intentions for you who tend to want to hurt you and in this case uh, Peter Madsen had premeditated intent which means he was expecting her obviously for the interview and he intentionally hurt her so once again ladies if you are a freelancer journalist whether it be anything in the film industry freelance anything you can be preparing people's taxes it doesn't matter what it is be careful let people know where you're going let people know where you're going to be let people know when you got there let people know uh when you're expected to leave so that way if anything comes out of the ordinary you can at least someone can come to you very quickly within a short amount of time. Uh, it really sucks that, you know, we live in a world where you have to do that all the time. But unfortunately, there are some, you know, some sickos out there. In this case, Peter Madsen was a sexual sadist. You know, he got off on the killing and mutilating, especially I think he, if I remember correctly, he actually had sex with the body afterwards, after it was dead. So he had some sort of situation going on mentally but just be very careful ladies but that's all i gotta say for at least right now until you know but go ahead Delilah, you can talk about your part sorry yeah like this was a little bit disturbing especially when like being in a place where you can't really escape anywhere like in a submarine uh and how they were diving in like it was that's just like a horror movie uh very unfortunate honestly I will talk more about, um, like, more about Kim Wall, but I just want to say that I don't know how he tried to, like, how he think, like, how he thought he could, like, escape a maximum security facility and get away with it. Uh, even though he was, like, able to escape partially, I guess, he, and you know, eventually got caught anyways. And, like, I don't know between the options of like being a fugitive or getting caught like it's still a life like nobody wants to live you know or even if he escaped to another country can he still like be arrested anyways uh isn't there like international cooperation between the countries for that like i don't know what he was thinking like he shouldn't have done or he shouldn't have murdered her if he wasn't prepared for the cons consequences honestly i think it's like that he have stomach to try to escape but as you said Devante like it could be because you know he's not mentally there uh and he had these urges um which eventually led to Kim Wall's uh, murder and the only thing I could say that I found was weird about this case uh was that you know they only used 
the evidence as what it seemed like you it seemed like they only used his constant change of story and also that one confession that he made as evidence for this crime and the rest was like common sense like oh yeah he was the only one with her and then we couldn't find her um and that kind of resembles like uh thomas quick a little bit where they just like based everything from what he said and what he like and there was like no really real evidence connecting him to it because as it seemed like there wasn't really any physical evidence here either like i had not they didn't seem to talk about weapons or any dna samples or anything like that um and you know this case is pretty recent it happened quite like like really recent like 2017 um so hopefully they didn't really interrogate him like they did in the 80s but more professionally um but you know or maybe they didn't really show the public the evidence or you know we we don't really know um but i just i just thought that was weird i just thought i was like okay shouldn't you like have some proper evidence before you sent to somebody for like life in prison um but maybe they did and they just like never showcased it to the public i don't know um at least in sweden at least you have to have like more physical evidence to uh it's harder to get a life in sentence i think at least in sweden if you don't have like proper physical evidence and everything connecting to the murderer well i will say this specifically at least in his case it seems like the first lie he tried to tell actually kind of led to the body because remember he said he let oh, her okay he he remember he said oh i dropped her off somewhere like off the I don't, I don't know, I on an island place. on an something? island yeah in copenhagen and then guess where they found her body off the shore of the island in copenhagen so his lie led to her being found I guess he expected to kind of bluff a little bit and be like, oh, I didn't kill her. I just dropped her off, but then wasn't expecting them to follow up and then found her body. But like, what if someone was in that island and actually did the crime? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying like, I'm trying to be a little bit like thinking that maybe he was just, you know, left her there. But I do, st- like, I understand that it's probably like highly... It's like, highly no, that's unlikely. Not really the that's, case. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just like thinking that you know, just basing it off from confessions. We already seen that before, and look what that happened. What that led to, you know. Um, even though there's mostly like common sense, so you can you know take one piece and like connect it to the other. Um, at least in Sweden, you need to have like more physical evidence before you can. Uh, sent this somebody especially if you don't have any witnesses which in this case there were no witnesses either um to send to somebody for life uh, but also to you can i guess you could take solace in knowing remember this is recently so this is it started 2017 so there was technology dna evidence was relatively you know up to date you know, so it wasn't like back That's in the why day. I'm like, yeah, so I'm pretty yeah, sure they just didn't publicly release a lot of information, but I'm pretty That's sure it's pretty too. straightforward. Yeah. That's why I was like, maybe they just didn't want to put it out there. Because uh, I, I think that, you know, they should, they shouldn't really just do a Thomas Quick one. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. But hopefully they did have some, you know, evidence that was just not out for the public because that would be more fair but either way like this seemed really you know pretty straightforward to me as well Uh, i just want to say a couple of things as uh, for the how the society handled or that how denmark handled this case as well i'm glad that they changed the safety measures for traveling journalists and uh you know i've always been thinking about that like how like, how are the safety measures for those who travel to dangerous places like that for the journalists? Like, I know we have, like, a couple of journalists here in Sweden who goes to, like, war zones, for example. Um, but I, I know that war zones are, like, a bit different. But I'm just saying that how are the safety measures 
Like, I know there are not a lot of journalists who want to work on dangerous places. Uh, but, like, how is it in America, for example? Like, how do you guys... Do they have any safety measures? Or, uh, like, how how is it in America, Delonte? Well, do you know that, maybe? <clears throat> it's very similar to what they practiced, where basically a lot of the time it's... Most interviews happen in very controlled environments where there's multiple people, so that it's not just the journalists by themselves. Um, even independent mm. journalists, they usually work with cameramen. Um, even though, like, their their job is to hold the camera, they're never really by themselves. It's very rare to see them by themselves. Mm. So that's one so precaution. Like a group of people and, like, a security and maybe a, like, yeah, okay. Yeah, so usually, like, there's always somebody else with a journalist. So if it's, in this case, if it's, like, a situation like this where it's, like, a female journalist who's a woman or whatever he's usually a cameraman and probably one of the person with them so it's at least three people who are actively together and Mm. like i always say in every other podcast episode it is much harder to kill more people than it is to kill one woman so yeah um that that's one of the precautions they do like you said war torn is very different because those are war torn countries and obviously Mm. something can happen to you know one to three of them but uh, yeah, in this case, it's it's usually in very controlled environments, which it seems Denmark was very behind on because I think they've been doing in the U.S. They've been doing that for like over 20 years or so. I'm just thinking like in general, maybe they didn't really because it's within the country. Maybe they didn't think that something like this would happen, which I think is honestly surprising because if it could happen to it like anyone else, it could happen to a journalist as well, as well, especially a woman. Yeah. Uh I was, uh, I, I'm glad that they at least changed it and made sure that there's better security for journalists, but also other people in closed environments like that, this, like a submarine, for example. Um, so I'm actually glad that they did that. Uh, and I also want to say a couple of things regarding Kim Wall as well. Um she seemed like someone who was representing, you know, marginalized group and under uh, presented people in society. I think that's very admirable. And I'm very sad uh, for the loss for the Danish people, but also for the rest of Scandinavia and the world to lose someone like that because it's very needed in today's society. Um, and hopefully there will be more journalists like, like her um and i'm just like sad about you know women in general being you know murdered like this it just breaks my heart honestly but i'm glad that at least changed the system and made it more secure for like within the workplace but also for women uh and all other people other people other people <laughs> as well so that's pretty much what I like wanted to say about this whole case. Uh, if you don't want to say anything more, Devante. Uh, you know, I always got to end it on, uh, well, outside of the food part. Uh, ladies, <laughs> be be careful. Uh, be unfortunately, careful. it's a very crazy world we live in. Uh, as intelligent. Even though she probably told who where she was going to go, you know, things like yeah. this happen. So as intelligent as... You know, as capable as you are, um, I also would rather you be safe. If you're going to be in situations like that, have someone with you, preferably, Mm -hmm. preferably a really trusted, whether it be a guy friend or uh, whether it be family member in situations like that, especially if you're one on one with a male in like a a very private, intimate situation, uh, definitely try and have yourself covered. like I said, it's it's very difficult physically to combat a full-grown man. Uh, statistically, I think they said the average guy can actually take on the average woman, about two or three of you at once. So mm. uh, it's, and obviously that varies, you know, it's not like a across the board thing. But the point is, just make sure you cover your bases, protect yourself, prepare yourself, uh, try and walk around with, I know some places I think mace is illegal, but, you know, get creative, you know, keys. You know, make sure you're protecting yourself, Jeez. doing what you can, uh, so that way none of that stuff can happen. So that way you're not in this situation. That's my primary concern. If you're listening to this podcast, I want you to be safe. I want you to be healthy. 
and I want you to live to tell your story. Mm. So uh, that's that's my word of advice. But uh, you already know what we do on this podcast. If you haven't already, I'm pretty sure you'll figure it out. You know, we're going to talk about not sorry, not talk about. Excuse me. Wrong. <laughs> we, you already know we have to bring up some nice, delicious foods to wrap up the podcast to bring in the good vibes. So what I'm thinking today specifically, something delicious, I am going to bring up uh, some nice, cheesy macaroni and cheese and I mean nice southern style macaroni and cheese just has to be minimum three cheeses you know nice and gooey in the middle I'm not saying paws and you know the nice crunchy little top that goes once you put it in the oven slow cook it for like 325 350 oh that's where the money is now you can sprinkle some bacon bits in there too Ooh, it's borderline sexual but uh <laughs> that's that's where my mind at uh, my mind is at right now i'm thinking of like maybe uh an omelet with some spinach and feta cheese boo uh and uh are you doing like healthy right bread. now are you doing that that sounds like healthy this is feel good I'm, food. Give me something mm, fatty. Yeah, like I feel good with that. That's good. Girl, I like that. I know like, what I you can't eat. eat. Give me something fatty. Mac and cheese every day. Like stop. it's not every day. It's just for today. Give me something fatty. <laughs> give, give me some feel good food. Give me some gl- I glazed feel good donuts, Krispy Kreme, it's, something. It's good for me and it's it's healthy. At least I, what I think. <laughs> she's currently acting for all of you right now because she be feeding for like some of the most interesting foods ever. So she's trying to act right now. You no, know, it's so good. Like I, okay, 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 okay. I can add some, some, um, um, I can add some bacon bits and, uh, I guess, uh, mushrooms too. She's still is that, is that good enough for you? It's depressing. But either way, it's been a pleasure what? to uh, be with you guys this episode. <laughs> and we will be uh, happy to see you for the next one. And don't forget, check our link. We are going to be on Twitch uh, post-summer. So that way we can interact with you guys in real time. Uh, so that mm-hmm. way we can talk about other cases, not just in Scandinavia, but also around the world, around the globe. Uh, we're going to watch some... You know, interrogation videos. We're going to watch some uh, court trials. We are going to go through the whole spiel and we're going to see it all across the globe. And you can do it all live with us when the Twitch becomes up and running for the following, technically the following season. So go follow the Twitch channel now while it's still young and early. Follow, follow. You might see us occasionally doing a test stream, but. It's not going to be full-blown running up until the following season. So be sure to do that. And like I said, follow us on all our social medias, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Yes, we got to update them. But hey, we're some of you actually do hit us up in messages. So uh, yeah, we do answer. We're very much the type of people to answer. So hit us up and we will catch you in the next episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, peace out. Bye. (laughs)